Good Wednesday morning. Unfortunately, some sad news yesterday with Willis Reed. We will talk about that, of course, an absolute legend. You had some local sports as well last night, including a Rangers loss. And, of course, the WBC, where Japan beats Team USA with Shohei Otani striking out Mike Trout. And Shohei Otani says at the end of this game, I believe this is the greatest moment of my life. That is a quote. Striking out his Angels teammate to win the WBC is the greatest moment of his life. So for those of us that didn't care about it and really don't care about it, never will care about it, you have to, yeah, like Sal this morning yelling at all the callers, what we need to understand is most of us care about our team winning the World Series more than the players care about winning the World Series, and something like this means more to them. We got to accept it. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? You know, good morning, G. Yeah, yeah. We got to accept that, you know, Rob Manfred is going to want to keep it going because he said yesterday that he wants to see more star pitchers uh, participate in this, that there aren't enough star pitchers yeah. like a Scherzer or a Verlander, and you, you can go on and on and on because the pitchers don't want to pitch in these games simply because it would be too much um, stress on their uh, elbows and shoulders, and they're not ready to go all in just yet. And while this was great yesterday and the, the the pomp and circumstance and the games themselves all, you know, were were enticing and I would say that they were competitive and the players really love playing for their, their teams, They're, you know, those teams are not paying those players $150 million. That's right, yep. Yeah, I think about Steve Cohen paying his players $350 million collectively and one of those players, unfortunately, is not going to make it. You realize that, you know, while this is great and everybody who seems to be a part of it loves it, the real situation here is that you know you're getting paid to play baseball and you're risking injury in in games that really mean nothing for anybody. Well, they don't mean anything for the owners of the teams, and for the most part, the diehard fans of the local teams that they root for, they don't generally care all that much. At least here, I mean, I think that. You know, in in this country, I'm sure Japan is going absolutely crazy, and maybe you, the Japanese baseball fan cares more about this last night than the Chiba Latte Marine uh, winning a championship. They may, I don't know, but for you and me, the Mets winning the World Series is the biggest thing, and for Brandon Nimmo, he's one that said it that the Mets winning the World Series is the biggest thing. But whether it's the World Baseball Classic or something else. I mean, you really do come to the realization when you're around it as much as we're around it that we care more about the championships than they do. I mean, because remember, if they don't win, they're still getting paid a lot of money to play, and their lives are great, and a lot of them are giving it their all. And there's some players that flat out say that I'm playing for the money, and I don't blame them. I'm not knocking them for that because take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your chickens. But Kayvon Thibodeau said, do you have more pressure on you when you're playing in a playoff game? And he goes, no. I just feel like it's more of an opportunity for me to go out there and get paid. And he's right. And there's a lot of guys who share that same mentality. So, you know, when we're going nuts about the WBC and saying, I can't believe these guys care so much about this. Well, this is not just a reality with the WBC. It's a reality in pro sports. We care more than they do. What I'd like to know is, like, one of these players is going to want to start getting paid in front of these big crowds and TV contracts and everything else. I'm sure they're getting a little something, but... I mean, yeah. What you know, do they get? I'm, I, I have know. no I, I, idea. I have no idea either. But like, they're put they're putting it on the line. They're playing hard, and obviously, guys are getting hurt. Uh, Alf Tuve's out for a while, and you got uh, Diaz is done. I mean, I, I think that's probably just a few guys that got hurt. I don't necessarily know that there's anybody other major that I got that got hurt. I didn't, I didn't see because I have not paid attention to this at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not interested, and, and that's fine if people are. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you don't like it or don't watch it or don't enjoy it. You can, um, but I just I I, I really it, it is a bit of a problem for Major League Baseball that there's so much interest in this and not as much interest in their regular season. Well, you know what? It's interesting because the commissioner's all over this. I mean, he wants it, he likes it, and uh, the obviously the interest is there. Uh, they have racked their brains, according to him, about 
different timing and there's really no other time but this time to do this. Yeah. They can't do it in the middle of the season and they certainly don't want to do it at the end of the season because they don't want to go up against the NFL. That's right. They would. This would not be as talked about as popular. The ratings would not be as much. There's no doubt about it. And you think about right now, this is the perfect time to have something like this on last night. It's in between the tournament games. Yeah, you got a regular season basketball and hockey, but I mean, for anybody who's a baseball fan or loves baseball, you don't you're not distracted by anything else. You know, I listen. I didn't watch any of this. I watched the Ranger game last night, and I watched my defense just completely panic in the face of a you know a fierce uh, four check, and I don't know what the hell Andre Miller was doing last night. Completely played one of his worst games probably as a Ranger this year after having one of his best games. But uh, you know, wa- watching these uh, these hockey games going down to the wire and everybody pushing to possibly take over first place in the Metro. I mean, last night the Devils and Rangers both missed a, a major opportunity to move up and get on the heels even closer to um, you know to the uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. But it wasn't done. But I and I, I wasn't watching any of this no, baseball. I, know. I no. just wasn't. I'm just not interested. Yeah, and I, I know the guys are. I know they are. And I, the players I are. It. And I do think that. You know, the international fan is. I do think that the, you know, American fan who, you know, might have uh, Puerto Rican heritage, Dominican heritage, who lives in the United States now has a huge interest in this. And I respect all that. But I think for for someone like me who baseball was the Mets and the Yankees growing up, loving the Mets, having friends that love the Yankees, that's what baseball was to me. And everybody else was just the opponent coming in. Well, it's kind of different. Like if they had it, you know, if it was truly celebrated in the Olympics, it's a little different story. Yeah, because the Olympics has history and you really feel like you're representing your country with the Olympics. I mean, this is just, it was born a few years ago and it just doesn't have the same type of feel, but... And maybe it will. Maybe this is just the beginning of it. And I, I would not be surprised if they tried to do this more and more and more because of the money and the advertising and the interest and all this stuff. And and that's what drives everything. I mean, we, we see it in the NFL, and this is always a fear of mine, that the, the greed, and I, I hesitate when I say greed because I think everybody tries to make the most money possible. But, you know, the drive to, for global money in these leagues – sometimes shuts out the fan that built the league. And you said it not that long ago when we were talking about London games, Germany games, and everything, that the Super Bowl has to be on U.S. soil, and every team in the NFL should be on U.S. soil. A little different also. There's no international influence when it comes to players on the field. You know, in the NFL. Right. The, the international influence is in hockey, basketball, and baseball. Right. There are many countries that are represented all through three of those uh, those three major leagues. And, of course, then there's Major League Soccer, which is not that far behind these guys, by the way, in terms of attendance and, you know. The people. Major League Baseball, you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the, point, the point being is that I, I could see the NBA going to, like, an international two-week tournament in the middle of their season. And maybe lopping off some games, yeah, and doing that, and having and having that kind of thing being played out, and those guys all playing for their countries, while you know while you restart the league right after that, and maybe instead of playing eighty two games, maybe you're playing seventy two games. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. I could definitely see that. But like because- for for me and you as a as Knicks fans growing up. And loving the team and wanting them to succeed, what are we going to be into that at all? Probably not. But I mean, if you want to make extra money and you want to yeah. have different eyeballs in the middle of a season, that's a way to do it. That that's a way to do it. Now, the one thing about basketball, it is in the Olympics, so mm-hmm. every four years at least you do get that. In hockey, there are international tournaments every year. Uh, they usually are at the end of the season, mm-hmm. and the guys that are in the playoffs usually don't make those teams and. If they're knocked out in the first round of the playoffs, some of them will go over and play in those uh, international tournaments. But I, I don't know. This is uh, it's a weird one. Just simply, we we lost a player. The Astros lost a player. I'm sure there are a few other players that I'm missing that you know got hurt in this. It's unfortunate. I'm, I know that the players love playing it. I, I I'm not interested. All yeah. I know is I'm not interested, and uh, it's it's unfortunate. But I will say now that it's over. Now that we can start focusing in on opening day next week. Yeah, well, this is what I think is, is going to be really interesting because th- this WBC clearly was the most popular of all of them, 
and more eyeballs were on this. And Team USA, Japan, Otani, Trout, everything. So now opening day is usually one of those moments, one of the best moments in the baseball season. And it's going to feel for some people, including the players that were in these high-intensity baseball games in the WBC, like opening day is not going to feel as important. Well, not for Nimmo, it will. For Brent, yes. I think but, for Broander, it will. For Scherzer, it will. But not all of them. You know, I know, I know, I know not I know. all of them. But anyway, it's over with, it's done with, and now we can start getting ready uh, for uh, for the New York Mets and the New York Yankees to open their respective seasons Next week. Now you brought up uh, Willis Reed, and when yeah. I found this out yesterday, I got to tell you, this is this is the third of 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 three guys that I really truly admire growing up. And anybody who's my age or a little bit older than me who remembers, of course, those great Nick teams of the seventies, uh, and when Willis got here, you know, Willis. The interesting thing about Willis Reed is that he was drafted by the Knicks and he only played for the Knicks. Mm-hmm. He had a short career; he only had a ten year career. But he won an MVP. He won a Rookie of the Year. He won an All-Star MVP. He was a multi-time All-Star. And he wasn't uh, Lou Alcindor or Kareem. He wasn't, you know, Will Chamberlain. He was Willis Reed. He was our guy, you know. And he loved being the Nick captain. And there was that iconic moment, May 8th, 1970. Believe it or not, that game was blacked out in New York. I know. Game seven against the – but you think back then – the TV rights weren't nearly what they were making off of ticket sales. Mm-hmm. So they didn't want to hinder ticket sales yep. by having the game on TV locally. Yeah, if you had to watch this game, the only way to watch the game was being there. You could listen to it on the radio. You had Marv Albert. Right, but the only way you could watch the game was being in the building, and they did play it on tape delay, I believe. At, they did. They uh, did. Hours later, yeah. Yes, on ABC. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is that um, – I remember sitting there listening to it with my dad on the radio. And Marv Albert was the announcer. Mm-hmm. And we used to listen all the time uh, on the radio in the car and everything else. And uh, it was just, I don't know, you know, I think about Roger Barrows passed away, Tom Seavers passed away, and Willis Reed. Those were three of my idols growing up when I was a kid. Yeah. And then, of course, we had Clark Gillies pass away, yeah. who was a – an icon for the Islanders around here. That's that's four guys in the last what three years. Yeah, that were right in your wheelhouse. Uh, right in my well, you know, not so much Clark because Clark was more. Well, he's a little bit older than me, but yeah. he was more a, more of a contemporary. These other guys were guys that I looked up to when I was a kid. Right. And, they, they, and, when when sports when the athletes were your heroes at yes, that point, where yes. they they felt like not even a regular human being that they were magical in some way. I was gonna. I, I have one guy that's still living, and I was gonna call him, but I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to call him like to like say, "Hey, you're the last living legend in my life." Clyde? No, it's uh, Burt Jones. Screw oh. Phil Sims. Oh, no. Yeah, Phil. No. <laughs> Imagine, hey Phil, I just uh, wanted to say I love you before you kick it. Um, yeah, I listen. I I understand that that point in sports fandom when you're a kid, when you're in your teens, uh, those guys mean so much to you. And, of course, I wasn't alive to see it, but that was one of those things you learned right away. You're going to be a sports fan in New York. You're going to know about Willis Reed. You're going to know about that moment. And learning about it over the years, that blackout thing, always blew my mind. And the other thing about the video of him coming out onto the court, there's a media member there that he sort of runs over. I always wanted to know who that guy was because he, Will Street's like, just get me to the court, get out of my way, you know, and the stories of, of Will Chamberlain, this is always the, uh, the video here of him coming out, and then the one guy taking the picture and then bumping into him as he gets out of the way uh, is tremendous. Um, and just get out of my way, don't take my picture, yeah, get me he, on the court. And he hit these first couple shots. Right, and, and that was it. one bananas. Yeah, and then and I then love the story of Will, too, where he was he he stopped his pregame routine to look, yes. to look and then threw him off and he went over and he's like wait is he actually playing <laughs> and to mess just think about that to throw Wilt Chamberlain off his game is is something that did, not a lot of people did and that and that truly was one of the greatest games in Nick history from the standpoint of not only just winning the championship but what Clyde Frazier did that game oh yeah I mean right. we we've talked about it a thousand times on this radio program and. And, you know, this is why Clyde is a, is a walking icon for a lot of us Nick fans as well. You know, we had to have the, pie, the, the Clyde Pumas when I was in high school. Sure. Uh, the red suede with the white with the white swoosh and everything. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it was a different time. It was a, a lot more innocence. You, you know, you had the Joe Namath thing going on. You had, mm-hmm. 
of course, the, 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 the Mets and who came out of nowhere to win a championship and then these great Nick teams. They brought in Earl the Pearl after that. And I mean, it was just unbelievable what was going on around Yeah, there. I mean, the, the, that time, it's I, I can't even imagine. And this is why I always say, you know, with Joe Beningo, and, and I get mad when he says I haven't seen these championships, to be alive and remember, if you are a Knicks, Mets, and Jets fan at that time, yeah. to be alive and remember that, I mean, that's good enough for a lifetime. Well, I, it's good yeah. enough for a lifetime. I'm sorry, it is. I was nine years old, so uh, you remember all, it, right? Yeah, I do remember it, and they also landed on the moon that year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or right that, before that, I right. guess. Well, some people think they did, at least, right? Of course, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was just you know, it's like that melancholy feeling where you just you, you you attach yourself to one of these guys, and then when they do pass away, you have a like a. a a, like a dose of reality hit you right in the face. Well, sure, yeah. And it brings you back to better times and better memories and things that were, were different. And the way that they were looked at was differently. There were Not everybody had an opportunity to, to put their opinions out there and just soil whatever the hell's going on. You know what I mean? It's just, it was just, it was simpler. And as a kid growing up, man, you just, you remember those those moments and you remember sharing those with your dad. Sure, absolutely. Now I'm not. I'm not. Well, I think tr- I speak for everybody in my generation that when they all found out yesterday, we all felt the same way. Now I'm. I'm not trying to be funny, but if you were going to call Burt Jones, what would you have said when he picked up the phone? When you said like, "You still there? Yeah, <laughs> like you're the last one of my know. childhood icons." Like what happened? What's the know. What's the icebreaker? I don't know. You know, I don't know, but I didn't want to call. I didn't want to do that. Hey, he's probably. Hey, you should, know, Willis Reed died. How you doing, Burt? Everything good? Yeah, but maybe don't maybe don't bring it up that way though, you know? Yeah, no. Just be like, hey, I just wanted to I just wanted to check in. Like we were talking about there with uh, what was it, Dan Deardorff, I just want to check in. Haven't yeah, heard just from you in a while. Checking in, haven't heard from you in a while, yeah. Yeah, just just a boomer it's check in. One of those in. check in things, yeah. A little check in spot. Yeah. I would do it. But I just don't know if the motivation is the right it, 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 like now's well, not the motivation. Maybe maybe in a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Settle okay. down a little bit. There's not so much emotion. Okay. That kind of thing. Yeah, but just make sure you do it. Because you probably regret it if you don't do it. It's one of those things. Yeah. I just called to say I love you. Well, I'm not going to do that. I mean, you could. You did, right? I mean, you loved him. Of course. So, it's called to say I love you, Bert. And then, that's it. Hang the phone up. It's me, Boomer. Mm-hmm. That's all you got to say. Just move on. All right, it's Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. We'll get Jerry Recco in here in just a couple of minutes to give you the